New Testament did he literally get up Preach and, claim and he was say, God. I am God, did he? Now, I stand corrected. And the Christian attitude... I was shocked when I found out who the biggest failure in the Bible actually is. Okay. You know, everybody asks, you say, who's the biggest failure? They say, Judas. Somebody else will say, no, I believe it's Adam. Well, how about the devil? <laughs> he's the most consistent failure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's not the biggest in terms of material failure and so forth. The biggest one in the whole Bible is God. Hmm. Uh, run, run, run. Don't you turn that set off. <laughs> you listen to it. You, I told you now, you sit still a minute. You know me well enough. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell something I can't prove the Bible. Heaven has a north and a south and an east and a west. Consequently, it must be a planet. The Bible said he measured the heavens with a nine-inch span. Now, the span is the difference, distance between the end of the thumb and the end of the little finger. And, and that Bible said, in fact, the Amplified Translation translates the Hebrew text that way, that he measured out the heavens with a nine-inch span. Well, I got a ruler and measured mine, and my span's eight and three-quarter inches long. So now God's span is a quarter, of inch, a quarter inch longer than mine. So you see, that faith didn't come billowing out of some giant monster somewhere. It came out of the heart of a being that is very uncanny the way he's very much like you and me. A being that stands somewhere around 6'2", six, 6'3", six, that weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple hundred pounds, a little better, has a span of eight and, I mean, nine inches across, stood up and said, Light be! And this universe situated itself and went into motion. This is all a copy. It's a copy of home. It's a copy of the mother planet. Where God lives, he made a little one just like his and put us on it. You know that God created Adam, and we won't go back over all that again. He created him in authority. He said, God said, and it was. God said, let there be light, and it was. And then he came up to create man and said, God said, let us create man in our image. Let him have dominion. Those were the words that he used to bring Adam alive. And then he created Eve out of Adam. Now, actually, God didn't name her Eve. Adam named her Eve later. That wasn't her name. Her name was Adam. Adam, when God said Adam, they both came. Their authority was one and the same together. They did everything together. They had always been together. Even when she was still part of him, he was as much female as he was male, like God is. And God separated the female part of him and then put them back together. And she was Adam. They, they were Adam. The, he was the man. She was the woman. He, she was the man with the womb. He lost his top-ranking, most anointed angel, the first man he ever created, the first woman he ever created, the whole earth and all the fullness therein, a third of the angels at least. That's big loss, man. I mean, you figure all that, that's a lot of real estate, brother. Gone on down the drain. Now, the reason you don't think of God as a failure is he ain't never said he's a failure. <laughs> no. And you're not a failure till you say you're one. Kenneth Copeland Ministries Canada, and it is, and, and the, the territories under which the Canadian office uh, is. She go off. The movement of the Spirit of God that has been prayed over 
called down, cried over, died over, sought after. People crying for the lives of other people throughout this entire North American continent, but most especially in these territories and in these places in which we sit tonight. Centuries. People crying and dying knowing it's coming. Yes. Knowing that there is a move of God beyond anything human eyes have ever seen. Yeah. Knowing, knowing it's coming. Prophets have prophesied of it. it. People have prayed, seeing it in the Spirit. But I'm here to tell you tonight, we are in the first rains of a major flood. It has already begun. Amen. Now I said that by the Holy Ghost. I, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. <laughs> this is me talking, all right? But it, it's, uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm still speaking of the Spirit, but in a, on a different level. This now, don't, don't get disturbed because he said three billionaires. Now, don't, I don't want you to get disturbed because uh, since I'm one of them, it'll only leave two more. <laughs> no, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Of course, I'm saying this with a smile on my face, but I'm serious as I can be. But now, I'm not one of those three since I already am one. <laughs> I've already appropriated that. I've been walking in that a long time. You think this is his will? <laughs> this is the perfect will of God for all men all time. Right. If any man here was a million as a following, for example, a leading charismatic word faith heretic named Gloria Copeland states that she and her husband, Kenneth, can control the weather. Check this out. You know, you're the, you're supposed to control the weather. I mean, Ken's the primary weatherman at our house, but when he's not there, I do it. He can see what's happening out there. Shows just like they have on at the weather, like on the news. I mean, he's got the computers got the current weather on it and all that for flying. So uh, sometimes I'll hear something. I'll hear the thunder start. And maybe he'll still be asleep. And I'll say, Ken, you need to do something about this. <laughs> and knowing that, but you are the one that has authority over the weather. 
One day, Ken and Pat Boone, well, we were in Hawaii at their house, and we were, they were sitting outside, and there was a weather spout out over the ocean. And that's like a tornado, except it hits the water. And so they were sitting there, and they just watched it, rebuked it, and never did anything. One day, I was in the airplane in the back, and my little brother was in the back with me, and Ken was up front flying, and we were not in the weather, because we don't fly bad weather, but we, we could see the weather over here. And I looked out the window, and that tornado came down just like this, down toward the ground, and Ken said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, you get back up there. So this is how I learned how to talk to tornadoes, I saw this. And that tornado went whoop, 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 whoop. Even while I was watching and my little brother was not a devout Christian at that time, and that was really good for him to see. So you're the weatherman. You get out there, or the weather woman, whichever it is, and you talk to that thing, and you tell it, you're not coming here, I command you to dissipate, and you get back up there in Jesus' name. Do you know what else that has settled then tonight? This hue and cry and controversy that has been spawned by the devil to try and bring dissension within the body of Christ, that we're gods. I am a little god. Yes. I have his name. I'm one with him. I'm in covenant relation. Yeah. I am a little God. Critic, you are Begone. anything that he is. Yeah! Same word. Amen. He's big enough to take it. So what do I do? What do you believe? He believed it. Because <laughs> you can to Ham and Jay. <laughs> prospered handsomely wow. the pastors themselves they live like rock stars with huge mansions private jets and fancy cars oh yeah but when it comes to opulence few religious leaders compare to kenneth copeland amen, amen. in this home outside Fort Worth, Texas. It has beautiful water views and comes complete with a boathouse. But that's not all. Copeland is an avid pilot, and here's his pride and joy, a $20 million Cessna Citation jet. It's the fastest private jet money can buy. He said he needed it to better serve the Lord and proudly did a flyby for his followers after the church bought it. But it's not just one plane. We found a fleet of planes registered to the church. And you won't catch him waiting in line at the airport because he's got his own, the Kenneth Copeland Airport, located right next to his man. My lifestyle follows the scripture. We give, we believe, we're open. You have a fleet of private jets. Why is that necessary? You're a minister. How many private jets do you have? We're open. We're open. Right after that, he walked away. Come up here and let's do it this way so he can see this, this whole congregation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My dear sir. Thank you so from the bottom. All of these leaders represent literally tens of thousands of people that love you, that believe God with you, and in answer to your request, we have just prayed for you and with you, and we did so in the Spirit. And we believe we receive, according to the words of Jesus in Mark 11:24, 24, whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, 
Believe you receive them and you shall have them. Our desire, sir, along with you, is in the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a mature man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Thank you, sir. We do bless you. We receive your blessing. It's very, very important to us. And we bless you with all of our hearts. We bless you with all of our souls. We bless you with all of our might. And we thank you, sir. We thank God for you. And so, all of us declare together, be blessed. Once again, all together, be blessed. Amen. 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 Every year, televangelists attract more than believers. They draw hundreds of millions of dollars from all around the world. All of it is tax exempt, but should it be? Senator Charles Grassley is investigating six top TV preachers. And tonight, our chief investigative correspondent, Armin Katayan, has a hard look at one of them, Kenneth Copeland, the so-called godfather of prosperity gospel. To live in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. In one TV sermon after another, somebody shout amen. But Kenneth Copeland and wife Gloria implore viewers to sow the seeds of their faith by following God's word and donating dollars, promising a hundredfold return in happiness and wealth. It's a bottom line business. This former ministry employee who feared being identified answered hundreds of prayer requests a day, most sent in with donations before quitting, feeling betrayed by Copeland's gospel of prosperity. I receive it! He is the recipient of the prosperity message. So when he's preaching health and wealth, He's filling that bottom line on his business. That's why Senate investigators are digging into whether ministry resources are being diverted into an array of for-profit companies tied to the Copelands. Cattle, horses, aviation, real estate development, and gas and oil wells, to name but a few. Michael Hoover, who worked for the Kenneth Copeland Ministries for five years, quit in 2005 over disagreements with the church. He is one of three former employees who told CBS News they witnessed other employees doing work on behalf of for-profit businesses tied to the Copeland family. I believe that they were using a lot of the ministry's assets for personal businesses. The nonprofit activity and the for-profit activity are so intertwined that you can't, you can't separate them. A two-month CBS News investigation, including interviews with nearly a dozen former Copeland employees, raises serious questions about the Copeland's religious empire. Beginning with this lavish lakefront home, all 18,000 square feet of it, and a fleet of private planes, all paid for by the ministry. The Lord spoke to me and said, you believe for a citation 10 right now. Copeland got what he wanted. That's the $20 million jet right there parked at the ministry-owned airport, one of four planes owned by the church. It will never ever be used for anything other than what is becoming to you, Lord Jesus. But that's not what happened. CBS News has learned he used this ministry jet and another to fly to and from Colorado three times in 2007, the site of frequent Copeland family vacations. The ministry claims that in rare instances that jets or employees are used for personal business, the church is reimbursed. You are not created for poverty. Churches are not required to file tax forms or make their finances public. The ministry, which says it does everything by the book, has refused to answer key questions about its finances 
raised by Senate investigators. We answered them. <laughs> we gave them a several page lesson on no. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland refused repeated interview requests by CBS News. When we went to ministry headquarters near Fort Worth, Texas, we were turned away. There's no way I can see him right now. Are you sure? If Senator Charles Grassley doesn't get the answers he wants, he may well resort to some words of his own in the form of a Senate subpoena. Armin Katayan, CBS News, Newark, Texas. Scripture verses tonight. Hebrews chapter 4. And we will read verses 11 through 16. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Notice he didn't say, let us labor therefore to make enough money to buy a new house. No. He said, let's labor to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the Word of God is quick or alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. He didn't say it was a two-edged sword. It said it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing <clears throat> even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Did you notice this has said the word of God, he? And it's talking about the written word of God. It's talking about the preached word of God. But now you understand that God and his word are the same. And the marvels and the wondrous works take place. What brings these wonderful works and miracles? What causes these things to be manifest? First of all, there must be a higher order of prayer coming forth out of the family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Intercession, petition and supplication for the lost. Much prayer, much calling forth, much calling things that be not as though they were. 
praying for the lost, reaching into the heart of God and asking him for the nation. 2019 must be a year of great intercession and witnessing outside the walls of the church building. I'll do signs and wonders. I'll do these marvelous works, saith the Lord. If you'll take me to the center, if you'll take me to the streets, give me an opportunity to reveal myself. You keep ringing the dinner bell of healing and I'll draw the people. This building and other church buildings won't hold the people. But you can't just sit here inside this place and beg for miracles. I'm going to require you, saith the Lord, to walk by faith. I'm going to require you to get healed on your own faith. Most of the people in my ministry, saith the Lord, most of them got healed on their own faith. Be it done unto you as you have believed. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. I'm requiring more of those of you older children in the family. I'm requiring more of you because you're older. It's time for you to help with the babies. It's time for you to see to it that the babies get an opportunity to know me, saith the Lord. I'll require it. But you will be rewarded beyond your wildest dream because you'll see miracles under your own hand. You'll see things happen that you've only dreamed about happening because the time has come. And just the way the great healing revival hit this earth 1948, 49, 50. And it was so easy because the miracles were happening in the streets and they were happening in tents and they were happening all over this United States. Well, those days are here again. It's time for it. It's time. If you get out there where the people are, you will be shocked and how easy the miracles will come and how easy they will flow. And people that have no idea about me or anything about my word will come running to those of you that will spend time in intercessory prayer. I'm not talking about hours and hours. I'm talking about minutes a day. I'm talking about just give me time. Just give me part of your morning. Just give me part of your evening and pray in the spirit and intercede for the lost. And I'll see to it, Seth, that 2019 is the most startling year of your life. I'll see to it that your body begins to renew and your youth begins to renew. And all of a sudden, pains and aches that have been there for years will disappear. Glory to God. When you get out and begin to minister to those that never heard about me, saith Jesus. You call on me and I'll call on you. And together, we'll see it come to pass. Together, we'll see it happen. Together together. And you will begin to see the desired change begin to slowly take place in the United States. In the political arena, you'll, be able, you'll begin to see change. When you begin to pray and intercede, 
for those that are on the opposite side of your political ideas. If you will begin to take some quality time and intercede for people, intercede for them. Take someone, take the image of that someone. Maybe it's Senator Chuck Schumer. Maybe it's Nancy Pelosi. Take that person, take that person and begin to intercede for them. I saw something in Nancy Pelosi at the, the going home of President Bush. I was watching her. She stopped by that casket. Her husband began to walk away. She began to walk away and she came back. Then I saw it. Now I know how to pray. Now I know how to pray. Something drew her back. You know who she is? She's somebody that needs Jesus. You know who Chuck Schumer is? Somebody that needs Jesus. You know who Donald Trump is? Somebody that needs Jesus. Amen. 